The only thing that's uh, negative about this job is it's just a bit gross. Hello. Today we're going to be looking at installing this under-the-counter mini Siemens dishwasher. It has no hookups. There's only power under there because my suspicion is this alcove was originally designed either for a small refrigerator, which would make sense, or a wine cooler. <laughs> They're both around the same size. My guess is it was for a small fridge. Well, we've got a big fridge, so we don't need a small fridge in the kitchen, but we surely do need a dishwasher. Problem is, no plumbing. Refrigerators don't need plumbing if they don't have an ice machine, and this one doesn't. So, what to do? We have a set of shelves here, uh, drawers I should say. So one of these drawers is going to end up being short, and then we have a cabinet door. And in there, you'll notice no plumbing. Hmm, okay. So we go over one more cabinet. We just take out what's in there, which is the garbage can. And there we are. We got a sink and a trap. This is called basket trap. They're popular out here. You unscrew them and all kinds of garbage falls out. I have not maintained these traps yet, so I will be doing that today. You might also notice a whole mess of spaghetti-type wires in the back there. That's for this ancient reverse osmosis water filter that I'll be pulling out of service and taking a look at once I get the appropriate cable to hook the cold water supply up to the little mini faucet we have here. That's going to supply cold water and this is the hot and cold. When we originally moved into this place, this hot and cold water supply were inexplicably reversed. So when you turned on the cold, you got blastingly hot water, which was a bit dangerous. So I reversed them. Now looking at the connectivity in the back, you'll notice that we have a takeoff for the water. There's the shutoff, which is that shiny star-shaped thing on the bottom. And then there's a valve, a mini valve takeoff for the water filter. So what I'll do is I'll just take that connector and I will hook it directly to the tap sticking out of the bottom there, cutting out the water filter so I can pull it out and work on it. I need to close up this little bodge here. This is a really bad idea to be uh, putting wastewater into any, any system after the trap there's actually supposed to be an air gap there because there is a potential for water to back, sewage to back up through that exit tube into your drinking water. Bad idea. So what we're going to have to do today is put a water supply in place and also a drain. Now the new code for installing dishwashers requires an air gap. Not a big deal. It just means that you have to have a pipe like for a washing machine, for example, that comes up and exits way up here, well, above, usually abo above the top of the sink would be okay. So we're going to put it maybe uh, oh an inch or two below the counter level, and that should be more than enough height above the trap, six, eight inches. The big problem here is I have a, I'm going to have a really hard time putting a an additional trap in because there is just no extra pipe here. I got a T pipe there and then an angle of 45. There is no meat between those two pipe uh, couplings. Normally you see on this side there's a little blue writing pipe. It's a straight pipe. I could cut that and there's enough on there to do something with. Not so, of course, never easy, not so on this side. So I'm going to have to very, very carefully cut that pipe out and then probably ream out the remains of the old pipe and put a straight pipe in to, uh, to make this work because this fitting here for the trap to work correctly should have been a T. It's not. It's a 90 with a clean out. 
So what I need to do is I actually need to install a T there and then uh, um, and then take the, the next trap off of there. So that's going to be my challenge. First thing is just to cut that thing and get this, this um, left side off, which I will be doing immediately. Stuff a rag in the sewer pipe. Don't use water because it will go everywhere. Get a bucket handy and some rags. Clean out this cabinet, la la la. And then we'll uh, have a look and see at the drain situation because that's going to be the most challenging. The water supply problem is not a big problem. I just bought a T connector for that offtake there, which will stack on top of that connector. The only problem I see there is we have a shutoff problem. The shutoffs don't work in this place. So that means I'm going to be dealing with active running water as I'm tightening all of these fittings in place, which is a drag. Uh, water running down the elbows into the shirt and the underarms, all that stuff in the face. But been there, done that, can deal with it, have done it, so ready for that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clean out this counter, all the uh, get all this clean dishes out of here, and once I've got that all clean, I'm going to start sawing this joint out with a hacksaw blade because I can't even get a, a hacksaw frame in there. I might try with the frame but I don't think so. I think eventually I'm going to have to use just the blade. <laughs> that should be fun. So here we go. Installing the dishwasher for Mrs. Maker because she doesn't like doing dishes. So I have to do them. I don't like doing them either. We bought a dishwasher but it needs to get hooked up and that's the challenge for today. Okay, well, to make this job a little easier on myself, I have cleaned out the bottom and taken the doors off using my Musta impact driver, which is still performing fantastically on a single charge. I don't even know where the charger is. <laughs> if I run out of battery, I'm going to have to go digging in the, uh, un the uh, unopened moving boxes. But so far, so good. Next thing I'm going to do is take out these drawers and then with the way clear I probably will pull out the dishwasher and then I'll be able to plan my angle of attack to get the two water related hoses over to this area. That would be the water supply and the drain. So those both have to make their way around this corner and to this approximate area. That's quite a long run uh, and the hoses just aren't long enough so one of the problems is going to be extending the hoses. I hope I have enough extension. If I don't, not a huge deal. But one of my plans is to move the drain for the washing machine into the corner there so I don't have to uh, mess around with extending the uh, drain pipe. But if I have to, it's not a big deal. I can do it. So here we go. Next step is to remove this side now that this side's nice and clear. So, on to this side. Well, here's the alcove where the dishwasher is going to go. As you can see, it's very clean, very nicely done. We have power down there. And we've got a set of drawers with a false bottom with an adjoining wall. The drawers go all the way to the back, so that's something to remember. And then we've got an adjoining cabinet, which is one wall between. There's a shelf insert right there so if we put any plumbing in we have to be aware of that shelf we may need to put a cut out in the shelf and there's a lip that goes this is a support for um, the tabletop the countertop I don't want to mess with that so I think we're gonna to have to stand that pipe off of that lip which may or may not uh, cause issues or we'll bring that drain pipe in uh, at a certain height and then just drop it into the, the uh, air gap drain 
So I gotta think about the plan now. Where is everything going to go? Here's the business end of the dishwasher. We've got a power cord. Power cord length is not a problem. We have a drain, which is, I think, coming up on six feet of drain, something like that. I'll measure it with the tape measure. It's uh, damaged on the end, so that's, that's going to have to be taken care of. Otherwise, we may end up with uh, water squirting out of there. Uh, that's because it got cut out of its original implementation and a little bit of damage occurred there so we'll make sure that's all right and then we have the fuel supply now this is a weird fuel supply because it's got a relay on the feed at the end which means you cannot extend it all that easily which is a drag so that means I have to bring the water to it the other thing that's going to be a bit tricky about this install is you've got to be careful about being able to pull this unit out once you've got it installed if it ever needs to be serviced for whatever reason. So I have to figure out a strategy of how do I pull it out without ruining the hoses. Now you either leave an instruction on the top, sort of hiding, lurking under the counter that says disconnect hoses before pulling out any further which would make a lot of sense or you put a lot of slack on the back which is not what I'm inclined to do because I'm already running quite a distance I'm going all the way around to the sink right and that's got to be three feet and that's got to be four so I'm thinking it's like seven feet a run which means I have to under the sink here put in two feet of drain so that air gap drain is gonna that trap is gonna end up right in there I figure and the hose is gonna come around the corner to it so we have enough run on the hose to be able to pull this little dishwasher out if it ever needs to get pulled out so the next question of course is where does the hose go does the hose go low or does the hose go high what we don't want is we don't want back flush so we don't want old water put, uh, falling back into the unit if at all possible there is a sump in the bottom of these things but you do want that water to get out because it's dirty and it'll go sour in the bottom and uh, that's the big problem I think is the drain I just want to deal with the drain correctly so what I think I'm going to do is take a look at the Siemens website and see if they have a recommended installation practice for a uh, dishwasher I'll look in general and I'll be able to tell you after a little bit of research whether or not we're drilling a hole low or high for this dishwasher drain the supply tube I'm really not worried about it's the drain that seems to be on my mind the other thing we're going to have to do is once we figured out whether we're going low or high is we're going to have to modify the drawer so we can close the drawer because it's, the hose is going to eat up some of that real estate on the back of that cabinet. So you end up with a short drawer. So that's the plan. After looking at the internet I'll get back and tell you where that hole is going to go so we can figure out where to put that drain. Okay, well I've done my research and I've decided that I'm going to do something called a high loop installation as opposed to an air gap. <clears throat> the air gap, the way it works is you have to pierce the countertop. I could maybe do it here, but I don't want to do it because I find them really ugly. So I'm going to do something called a high loop, which requires that the drain tube go 32 inches above the floor. So my countertop is 34. So if I connect the, the uh, loop to the underside of the countertop, I'll have enough of a, uh, a loop there to prevent water from flowing back into the dishwasher. So that's what I'm going to do with this a standard trap. So what I'll be doing is a high loop 
installation to a trap, a P-trap. And um, that means that I'm going to be bringing that hose along the perimeter of the counter, the cabinet bottom, along the back. And it will go kind of jog around that little thing there. Or I might, I might do some surgery there, but I hope not. And then go up and into a P-trap. So that's the general plan. What I'm going to do now is separate the baskets, see what kind of junk is in them, into a bucket, and then look at splitting the connector down there. That's the next thing I'm going to do. So the next thing is cleaning out these baskets. Cleaning out this kind of basket is really straightforward. They just unscrew. The only thing that's uh, negative about this job is it's just a bit gross because you're going to end up with all the junk that fell into the sink and it's slimy and disgusting. Not hard, just gross. So let's do this one first. See what we get. A uh, little stick. Nothing much to see in this one. Looks like an old uh, stick. Okay. That one's done. What's going on over here? This one's empty, but there's something hanging off of the drain, like a leaf. So that's pretty clean. That's nice. Do a little bit of wiping. I'm going to dump this water. Because the next thing we have to do is cut that pipe. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, giving me a like, and leaving me a comment. I really enjoy making these videos, and I want to know from you how I can make them better. The whole point of these videos is to demonstrate that if I can do something, you can do it too. Well, that's it for now. So long, and remember, keep making.